Welcome to Business Amplified with host Kevin A. Dunlap. This podcast is for small business owners aiming to amplify their enterprises. Explore strategies to play a bigger game by becoming an author, public speaker, podcast host, or expanding your brand in other ways. Elevate your business on Business Amplified. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Business Amplified. I'm your host, Kevin Dunlap. And today I've got a, a wonderful person. We were having a little bit of a discussion before we actually going to do this interview or did this interview or are doing this interview um, is that uh, he couldn't find it. He's, a, a, he's an author. He's a first time author. I, will, I do want him to share some of the stories about this. Now, remember, the, pro, the purpose of this show of Business Amplify is for you to step outside of your comfort zone, to start doing something different, to gain more exposure to your business because you're doing uh, something uh, bigger and, and, and brighter and therefore you're going to attract more clients. But anyway, without further ado, I want to introduce our guest today. His name is Mark Osborne. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Kevin. It's a real pleasure to be here. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here as well. Now, we were talking a little bit about that you have a hardcover book. Most people go soft cover, but you have a hardcover book that, that just came out. And uh, so, so uh, Mark, before we talk about your book, tell me some, uh, some of us about who you are, what is that you do, and why do you do that? Absolutely. So uh, again, my name is Mark Osborne, uh, and I've uh, been doing B2B marketing and sales, building revenue systems uh, for more than 20 years. Uh, and, and what I do is I work primarily with CEOs and founders at early stage B2B services, technology, or SaaS companies uh, to help them build revenue systems, to attract more of the right prospects to accelerate those best opportunities through the sales pipeline, and then to activate their existing clients for faster renewals, larger upsells, and more referrals. Uh, and oftentimes companies at the sort of this early stage are at an inflection point where the CEO or founder oftentimes you know, has worked in an industry, had an idea for a better mousetrap, founded a company to build and deliver this mousetrap, and then sort of achieved that initial success based on their expert knowledge of the industry landscape, the product that they've built, uh, and, and their intimate knowledge of their customers and their Rolodex. Uh, but now, now as they look at, you know, how do we get to this next stage, they're sort of at an inflection point. And they could bring on a, you know, a full-time CMO uh, or, you know, an internal marketing executive, but Oftentimes, those people make a big impact on the culture of an organization, and founders may not always want that. Oftentimes, those people are really expensive. They expect equity. So there's a lot of sort of risk there. Alternatively, they could work with sort of external partners like an ad agency. But unfortunately, not all ad agencies are great at strategy. I kind of describe ad agencies as like a power tool. Uh, they can cut a bunch of boards really fast, but they may not be great at measuring the length of the board or even deciding if, you know, sort of cutting it uh, is, is the right move. Uh, and so oftentimes companies really need, you know, sort of a strategic mindset about their marketing, not just buying ads. And so that's where someone like myself can come in and really sort of add and deliver that value to the company uh, so that they can get the systems that they need to grow their business layer in the people, processes, technology, data uh, to really set them up for that next stage of growth without the risk of that full-time hire or the cost of working with an ad agency. Mm -hmm. I, I can definitely see that when you are coming in as an independent contractor versus uh, an employee, that gives you more more liberty. And then, then you're also not restricted. You have to be sitting in your cubicle from nine o'clock in the morning to five in the afternoon. <laughs> That's right. And they also get the benefit of, you know, my 20 years of experience without putting me in a, in a chair from nine in the morning till five in the afternoon, uh, because there's a lot of risk that uh, comes with them having to pay me for that that time. Yeah, yes, there is. Uh, one of my first jobs that I had was as a computer programmer. And so I was I was actually sitting in a cubicle, nine to five job, you know, I was working on uh, a different uh, computer systems uh, for them. And this was in, like 1997. I mean, this was quite a long time ago. And there is somebody like uh, two cubicles down from me that he was an independent contractor. So he just came and go as he went. But he, was, but he was hired for a specific purpose, a specific, a specific task uh, to be accomplished. And then when his when that gig ended, he ended. He left. That's right. 
And I'm assuming you're doing this as your own business. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And so I work with uh, work with a number of companies at sort of different stages. Typically, though, it's after uh, they've gotten that first initial success. So I often say early stage, but not startup. Oftentimes, startup are looking for those first 10 cu customers. I will spend a, you know an afternoon for free or you know they can get a copy of my book and it pretty much tell them what they need to do to get to that initial stage of growth. It's that next stage of growth that requires a little more creative thinking. Uh, and that's where I really add the most value. Yeah. So tell me about your book. I mean, uh, for for our listeners out there, uh, I know you as uh, for this uh, for the YouTube channel, you, you've shown the book a couple of times uh, to the audience for the viewers. What, what, what about the listeners? What's the name of the book, and and what is it all about? Sure. So uh, the title of the book is "Are Your Leads Killing Your Business," uh, which is a little bit of a provocative title, uh, but it's based on the idea that. You know, we all know that 80% of our revenues come from just 20% of our customers. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. most companies don't do a good job of applying the 80% of effort towards those 20% of customers that will generate 80% of their revenues. Uh, and as a result, uh, there's really an obsession with, you know, more leads, more leads, more leads uh, in B2B businesses. But that obsession with quantity uh, oftentimes comes at a, at a really deep cost. And what I have seen mm -hmm. you know, over the last 20 years is um, that if you are just focused on the quantity, you're missing those best opportunities uh, and your competitors are capturing those best opportunities and then closing them. And so here's what happens when you're just focusing on you know, all opportunities equally or not doing a good job of identifying the best ones. Well, those worst leads never really see the value in your product because they never really align with you and your vision for how the product delivers value. As a result, they want significant discounting. So that really eats into your margins. They also never really align with how you think the product should work and solving the business for them. So that means that they you know, want customization or a lot of handholding, which further eats into your margins and maybe pulls you behind building what you want to build for the marketplace and what you know the marketplace really wants. Now you're just building something for this specific customer. And then ultimately that customer churns without renewing or you know, in deepening their engagement with you for more revenues and certainly not without, uh, or certainly without providing referrals or testimonials that you really need if you're gonna dominate the marketplace. So it really creates a death spiral when companies get obsessed with quantity and then they don't focus on the quality uh, to identify those mm. best opportunities to put 80% of their re uh, resources against those 20% of customers that are going to make up 80% of their revenues. Uh, and so 100%. the book is all about how to create the systems to identify those best um, opportunities to then uh, put your resources against them, accelerate them through the sales pipeline, and then activate those clients uh, after that initial contract. Now, do you see these uh, newer companies, sometimes they undervalue themselves or undervalue their product or services that they're providing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I Oftentimes, because, you know, they're really sort of, you know, obviously, there's there's a bit of imposter syndrome where people that have mm -hmm. really great knowledge uh, are, you know, sometimes uh, squeamish about, you know, asking for the, the, the true value of what it's worth. But, you know, pricing is uh, you know, set by what the market is willing to pay. Uh, and so the smart companies that we see are those that you know, will experiment with different pricing uh, until they find what's resonating with their specific ideal customer, uh, their specific market segment and their niche, uh, and then use that to you know, sort of guide what it is they deliver and how they deliver it uh, to adjust to sort of healthy margins at that price point. I'm glad you you mentioned about imposter syndrome because I I see that a lot with uh, with newer uh, businesses, especially with solopreneurs, is that they uh, they undervalue themselves. They they feel like they're an imposter, and you know if you're trying to amplify your business, that could make that imposter syndrome uh, even go up, uh, could even make it feel uh, to, or skyrocket. So like, if they were to say, hey, I don't have enough value, now I'm going to get on stage and, and talk about this, or I'm going to write a book. Now, like, like I said, why who who am I to write a book? And I say, who, who are you not to write the book? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Well, and, you know, we all have unique experiences. And, you know, 
a lot of the things that I talk about in my book are really built on, you know, tried and true marketing principles. Um, but the sort of my experience of having helped, you know, dozens of companies over, you know, a couple dozen years to implement this, maybe it brings that uh, to light in a way that, you know, some new business uh, can connect with it in a way that they haven't before. Even if I didn't invent the idea from scratch, maybe I can explain it in a way uh, that makes it more powerful, or perhaps I can reconnect it uh, with other ideas in a way that that makes it powerful. You know, there's a there's a quote that Steve Jobs wasn't that much of a of a sort of a creator or innovator of new products as much as he was a tweaker of taking a product that existed and then tweaking its application to the marketplace. Um, and so that he was really sort of innovative in how he thought about the way products could be used. You know, the, the, I, the iPod wasn't the first MP3 player. Uh, it was just the first MP3 player to talk about the promise of this in a way that customers used it. Uh, and that's what really uh, brought that connection to the marketplace. Oh, wow. Well, now, um, now when you, when you, when, when did you decide to start writing your book? How, how many, how long ago was that? So funny story. I actually had written most of a book several years ago, uh, but the premise of the other book was all about how consumers were sharing more and more data about themselves uh, with companies. And in exchange, they wanted more and more customization. Uh, and that was the trend that we were really seeing in sort of digital marketing and uh, sort of marketing in general. Uh, and uh, however, after the Cambridge Analytica scandal happened uh, with Facebook and uh, sort of Brexit and um, some, you know, really sort of tumultuous things in the American uh, political system, people became sort of hyper aware of their data being shared and privacy. Uh, and so a lot of the sort of trends that I had identified really switched directions uh, and sort of changed the landscape of how consumers were sharing information and how companies were using uh, data on their consumers. So I had to throw out a mostly finished book uh, because it, it just wasn't true anymore. Uh, this book uh, was really more of a, of a reaction to what I uh, sort of witnessed, which was a lot of B2B companies had been moving along and, and making sort of incremental improvements, um, but they weren't necessarily adapting to some new changes in using data or technology uh, in their sort of go-to-market strategies, their marketing and sales. And then when the pandemic lockdowns happened, a lot of hmm. B2B companies really just hit the pause button. Uh, and maybe they put out one more white paper or did one more webinar, but they kind of just waited for things to get back to usual. Um, and McKinsey talks about, uh, you know, the consulting firm, they talk about that the pandemic lockdowns accelerated some trends in B2B by more than 10 years and less than 10 months. And so when those companies came back after the lockdowns and tried to do the things that they had always done, they found that it just didn't work at all. Uh, and so mm -hmm. the book was written largely as a response yes, to that, to, to that. sort of examine, well, what changed during the pandemic lockdowns? And then companies that are successful, what are they doing? How are they approaching the marketplace differently? And so how can a company, um, you know, sort of tie into those modern uh, trends and, and really take advantage of uh, the opportunities that exist today? No, mm -hmm. uh, well, Thank you. I want to say that I thank you for sharing those examples. Uh, another question I, I kind of want to find out is, uh, as you've been growing your businesses, what's been some of your biggest challenges and how did you get past those? Sure. So one of them is is really related to just sort of a mindset uh, and, mm -hmm. and a mindset about how to deliver value for the marketplace. So you you talked about, you know, early days of the Internet. I was actually building websites and marketing them as early as 1996. Uh, and so in the early HTML days, email coding. Yeah. <laughs> in the early days of the internet, it really was about, um, you know, sort of finding little exploits or ways to game the algorithm, whether it was SEO optimization or even pay per click, where you could find, you know, sort of and exploit opportunities that other people hadn't figured out. 
Um, and this explosion of data and then the explosion of technology to make sense of that data really led to a lot of, you know, sort of growth through things like growth hacking, which was, you know, sort of using technology to exploit data and uh, gaps in the algorithm to sort of game the system. And I got really deep into that. I was very passionate about it, uh, so much so that Advertising Age magazine named me a marketing technology trailblazer. Uh, back in 2017. They said I was one of the most sophisticated 25 people in the world at using data and technology uh, for marketing to, to grow businesses. But I realized that the pace of innovation uh, that was taking place within data and technology was just too fast to keep up with. And the longer I worked with uh, companies in the space, I saw that those that were really consistently growing weren't the ones that were chasing this next growth hack or this next, you know, sort of way to game the algorithm. Instead, they were the ones that were building systems uh, and systems that uh, allow them to then layer in data, layer in technology, layer in people. And this is the same, uh, you know, sort of framework that I, I see happening with generative AI and chat GPT is it's not about, you know, having a new tool, a shiny hammer, and then going and looking for nails. So chat GPT isn't going to solve all your problems for you. But if you have built systems that you can then layer in technology, that's how you can accelerate your cycles to have a computer work 24 hours, to have it work without uh, human error, uh, to really sort of accelerate a lot of things. It comes from the systems and then layering in the technology. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you uh, as far as, let's say, uh, using uh, AI, ChatGPT, uh, image manipulators or creators and uh, any of that stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it is a, a great tool to have, but it's, it's just a tool. It, it yeah, is well. not to replace uh, somebody else. I mean, I mean, I, I use ChatGPT all the time, but I, I'm using it, like say, uh, I have a, a Tuesday training that I do on Meetup uh, on the first and third uh, Tuesdays of the month. As you know, I have this idea of this this concept, of something I want to train about. I'm like, hey, uh, ChatGPT, write me a, a 60 minute outline for 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 this. Like, oh, I never thought about that. Or I never thought about that. Like, I'm so glad of this uh, because sometimes what I've realized, especially in the last six months or so, is th th there's so many things that are completely obvious that are completely you you just never even knew about. That's right. <laughs> Well, and, and we're seeing a lot of people sort of use it as kind of a lower level employee. So like if you would, uh, you know, assign an intern, put together 20 ideas for what I should talk about on this topic, you know, 20 different possible bullet points. Then rather than you spent sitting down and thinking about that, you can look at what they generated and then say, oh, some of these are I, I wouldn't have thought of, but these are the best three. And now you can go mm -hmm. forward and do that work on those three. Exactly. Oh, uh, so, so tell me about some of your successes then. I mean, you sound, sound like you've been doing this for you said, over 20 years. How long have you been doing this as a uh, as a uh, as an individual or, or as a sole proprietor? Sure. So I've been consulting uh, with companies, you know, for for more than 10 years uh, in, in lots years, of different wow. capacities and, and doing different things. You know, obviously, I was you know very proud of the the Ad Age Award and uh, being able to to publish my first book was was certainly something that I was, you know, have always wanted to do uh, and so was really proud uh, to get that out and, and in fact it, it went to number one in 10 plus categories uh, on Amazon mm -hmm. once we uh, once we launched that so uh, really proud of that but honestly my greatest successes are in sort of the results that I deliver for clients and that's really where I kind of put the most the most pride that I have is seeing my clients go on to great successes whether it's you know, having worked with early stage companies that have successful exits uh, or uh, get, you know, sort of a big infusion of capital or, or see just really great growth after I help build those systems. Uh, that's where I, I kind of take the greatest pride and 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 really enjoy those successes the most. Well, and I'm glad you said that because um, a, a lot of people don't focus on that. And so I'm going to say that some of our listeners may or may not uh, as well is that, yes, you can have goals and things that do for success. You know, like I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to be, you know, doing whatever. I'm going to be whatever. Um, however, if you start having goals that are outward focused, then the inward focus ones would just occur. 
like at the time of this recording of this uh, of this podcast, uh, I'm also the owner of a company called Optimal Performance Academy. And this is a business coaching business. It's, you know, it's, it's more for the uh, people that are right before where you're going. So I'm trying to get them to where you are. And so then you go take them to the next level. Is that instead of saying, hey, I want to make X number of dollars, I want to do this. My goal is to help. Uh, right now, my current goal is to help 1,000 small business owners break into the six-figure uh, income level. That's great. So, 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 so I'd say, I mean, if I say I want to make a million dollars, well, I could probably do that at a hundred people. But the thing is, sure. if I could, go, if my focus is outward focus is to help those other people. The money's just going to come in uh, uh, naturally. Yeah. Ooh. I'm sure you've heard the term of like sort of a growth mindset of, you know, there's enough success out there for everybody. Uh, and so like, yes. I, I don't have to take your piece of the pie in order to have more pie. We can just grow the pie together. Uh, and and I definitely try to sort of have that sort of generosity mindset and that sort of growth mindset uh, as I think about businesses. And, you know, I spend a lot of time, you know, counseling companies that are either sort of too small to really sort of need me yet or they're, you know, what they need isn't sort of exactly aligned with the place that I add the most value. And, you know, afterwards, they're like, that was such an amazing hour. Let me pay you for that. And I'm like, no, 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 like. I'm I'm happy to give away a little bit of uh, time and thinking to help you get to the next stage of your business, and then once you're uh, ready for a deeper engagement, we can do that. Very good. I mean, uh, you do stuff uh, pro bono. That's that's just good karma that you that you're sending out to the universe. <laughs> well, and, and in fact, uh, along those lines, so for all of your uh, audience and and listeners, whether they're watching or viewing, I'll actually give a free copy of my book uh, to the first fifty mm. folks. Uh, that go to modernrevenuestrategies.com slash free download. Uh, so spelled exactly the way you think it is, modernrevenuestrategies.com slash free download. They can get the full book as well as all of the templates, calculators uh, that I describe in the book for you know building out all the systems they need to grow their revenue. That's incredible. And what do you sell your book for? I just want to show them the value. Yeah, so I think it's going for twenty bucks right now on Amazon. So for for twenty dollars, for I, I just go to that website uh, for a free download. It's going to be in the description. I don't worry about that in case you weren't able to write it down uh, quick enough. And thank you, thank you very much, Mark. I'm I'm so glad that you're uh, willing and able to do that. That's that's that's, that's a wonderful giveaway. Absolutely. Now I guess one uh, one uh, not not the last question. But what would you say to somebody that's, you know, because, you know, the purpose of this show, the purpose of the podcast I hope is for people to push their comfort zones to start doing something different. That's why I interview authors, public speakers, uh, people that do webinars, people that do workshops. What would it, what it would be one piece of advice that you would tell somebody, regardless of where they are in their business, they could be startups or they could be, you know, um, running a hundred thousand dollar plus business with uh, 10 employees. What, what, what kind of a, what, what piece of advice would you give those people? to expand their horizons. Yeah, so I've done some, you know, like you, I've done some training on sort of public speaking or helping people uh, to get better at, you know, making presentations or, or even improving my own presentation skills. And one of the things that they say, there's there's a great book um, called, uh, I'm gonna forget the name, but I, I'll think of it. But one of the things that many uh, trainers uh, in the in the space will say is, that you become better at presenting once you know more about the content. Uh, and so like your presentation skills actually just get better as you become more comfortable uh, with the content that you're saying. And so the thing that I would encourage uh, your audience to do is to really think about their positioning strategy. Uh, and, you know, we do an exercise with folks where we, you know, examine the customer and what they really care about and examine the competitive landscape and what other people are talking about and think about your company's unique capabilities and sort of, you know, why you are the best solution for what customers care about and what versus what uh, competitors have. Spending the time to really think through that uh, and really get crisp on who you serve, why you're better than the other options the reasons to believe uh, that your claims are, you know, sort of credible, that's going to make you so much more powerful in all of your communications with your clients, whether it's, you know, doing public speaking or uh, writing articles or other content blogs that you might be doing, uh, or even in your uh, sort of sales pitches and, and marketing presentations. That would be my advice. 
Yeah. I'll, I'll actually uh, do a little dovetail of, of what you just said is that if you're afraid of getting started, just go ahead and get started. You, you, you'll probably screw up the first time. That's okay. The thing is, I, I will sometimes say if you're about to do a, a public speaking or do a webinar, just go ahead and screw up deliberately just to get it out of your system. <laughs> because yeah. I, I know for me, uh, I started started shooting video when I was in real estate back in 2009 after I won a little pocket size camcorder. It was it was called a flip camcorder at that uh -huh. time because all but that was when I was I'd sit in your pocket. And I remember filming my first house, and I'm standing in front of the ca camera. I was introducing myself. I mean, in all honesty, if you if you go to um, if you go to uh, YouTube and type Kevin Dunlap uh, a Liberation which is the name of the house uh, on that first video is still on YouTube. And I, I leave it there deliberately to say, this is how bad it was when I started. <laughs> Look how much better I've become. And the That's thing good. is, if you're afraid that you're going to say, you're going to start shooting a video for a blog or a training video or you know whatever it is, I would guarantee you. And I've, and I've done this hundreds of times. I mean, I've, I, in my real estate business, I shot, I mean, I've probably shot close to five to 600 videos of, of, of all the houses over the course of 11, 12 years. And I would guarantee you, uh, when I was shooting those videos, the, I would shoot the, the I, I broke it down into three parts. There was the introduction to the house and the, hey, thank you for watching. So those I shot back to back. But I, wow. and then I shot the, the tour of the house. And I would tell you this, I'll be standing in front of the camera and saying, okay, and we're at one, two, three Main Street. Okay, everybody, uh, hello everybody. My name is Kevin Dunlap with Trident Investments Group. Today at what we're at one, two, three Main Street. This is a four bedroom, two and a half, uh, two and a half um, square foot house, or two and a half square foot. There, there's, there's a script right there. Okay, so I guess one, two, three Main Street, four bedroom, two and a half uh, square foot house. And it's 2000, that, what, what, how many square foot was this? <laughs> sure. So I, mean, I screwed up, I, I was doing, it still screwed up like that at my 10th year. I mean, it will it will happen. The thing is, once you get better at it, and once you start getting more comfortable, it's going to get a lot better. For an example, and I'm going to uh, uh, kind of make fun of Mark a little bit right here. He said that when he wrote that wrote his book, he basically he trashed the most all of the whole his first uh, his first draft to write the book that he currently has. I mean, you have to be okay with that. When I wrote my first book, it was called Lease Options in the 80s. It came out in 2015. I wrote the book based upon my FAQs on my website because it was all about lease option real estate. So I had my 29 FAQs. And I basically I turned it into a book and I started reading that book. Like, oh, my gosh, this is the most boring thing out there. <laughs> so I said, how can I spice it up? And I ended up, even though it's a book on real estate, it was also a fictional book. Because I made two, I made two characters of Peggy and Roger, husband and wife. They were thinking about doing the lease options, but they had different perspectives, and therefore I was able actually to tell a narrative about the subject from more, from, from more than one perspective. So technically, it's a it's a fictional book with non fictional characters. <laughs> Interesting. So, but the thing is, just get out there and, uh, and do it. I mean, and, and just get started and. Uh, this this is how you're going to grow yourself. I mean, like uh, when Mark wrote that book, I, I would probably almost guarantee you uh, he wanted to get a, a best selling author, but it wasn't like it, it was like because every author's dream is to be a best selling author. However, he wasn't expecting the the, the reviews or the uh, or the accolades that he got uh, from doing it. So just go out there and do it, everybody. That's how you're going to grow your business. And and now Mark, can, he can use this book. He says he's giving away to the first 50 people uh, that, that listen on this show. And uh, But now he can actually turn that book into possibly a signature talk. He can make that book into a course. He can make that book. I mean, that those kinds of things is how you grow your business. Well, would you agree, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, any uh, how do you besides the, uh, the the free download and again it's going to be in this in the description. How can they get a hold of you if they want to see if 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 they are at the stage where they could use your services uh, for your um, for your business? How can they get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually offer what we call a 10x ROI B two B growth guarantee, where we'll guarantee a 10x return on investment uh, for working with us. But the way that we can do that is. We'll spend time doing a diagnostic for free with any business uh, to help them sort of identify what's their fastest path to growth. Uh, and so we can sort of examine using some benchmarks we've built over the years of you know where you are at attracting the right prospects, accelerating them through the sales pipeline or activating clients for renewals, upsells, referrals. Identify that biggest opportunity for you and then make a recommendation on, on how to get you there. 
Uh, and so we'll do that for free with any business. Just send me an email at Mark, that's with a K, at modernrevenuestrategies.com. We'll set up some time and uh, see if we can't help you out. You know, do you uh, work with main, mainly with people online or do you person to person or either? It doesn't matter. I do either. Yeah, I'm here in Southern California. Um, so okay. if, if you're out here, be happy to happy to sit across the table from you or happy to set up a Zoom call. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm, thank you for, uh, for sharing that. And for me, uh, uh, as my uh, thing that I want to also I do a, a, quick, a quick little ask is that we are still looking for other people that are that would be good guests uh, for this show. Uh, so, so what you can do is you can go to our website and do a pre-interview, a 15 minute pre-interview. So we can see, sit down and figure out, is this going to be a good match or not? And that's going to be at optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash pre-interview, no hyphen, just pre-interview. Again, it's optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash pre-interview. And if we end up uh, uh, being on the show like uh, like Mark is, then we'll go ahead and do our our 30 minute uh, conversation that we're going to have where you could be sharing your business and your ideas to help other people grow. So Mark, before we go, is there are there any last words that you have uh, that you like to share with the audience? Uh, no, the only thing you, you were talking about, you know, just get it going. And people oftentimes say that, you know, perfection is the enemy of progress. Uh, and so I would definitely sort of, you know, leave that phrase in the mind of your audience that get out there, get it going. You don't have to get it right. You just got to get it going uh, and encourage them to, to uh, start start that work. Exactly, because we, once you do it once, then the second time is because a little bit easier. The third time comes a little bit easier, and it just gets easier over time. And if you're doing video and stuff, it's okay to screw up. Because one of the things I'm going to ask you is, uh, because people are, people are are like all about a perfection. Let me. Have you ever heard of an actor? His name is Robert Downey Jr. Has anybody ever heard of him? Sure. Do you Iron think Man. that multi-millionaire, very famous Sherlock Holmes slash Iron Man slash all the other stuff that he's done, do you think he he ever does a second take or a third take on a movie? You tell me. Well, I'm going to say absolutely he does. So he's a highly skilled, paid actor, and there's going to be a second take or there's going to be a third take because he said the lines that's slightly longer or he forgot his line or somebody else can be skewed. So if people like that that are paid professionals mess up, why do you have to be so strict on yourself? That's, that's all I have to say. That's a great point. And and the last thing I want to say, and what you were talking about about perfection is is the uh, is the enemy of progress, or I believe you said something like that. Uh, I remember hearing in my yoga classes the 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 instructor. This was back when I lived in Las Vegas. The inst instructor says, "Okay, uh, class, this is not yoga uh, practice. Uh, this is not yoga perfect. It's yoga practice." That's right. <laughs> That's right. So stop stop being so hard on yourself and just get out there and, and get started. Well, well, Mark, I want to say thank you for being on the show today. It was it was a great. Uh, this was a great conversation, and I you know I look forward to uh, seeing what some of your successes are. And I'm probably going to get your book as well. So just 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 to see just to, just have another thing I could that I could be reading and learning from. Sure. Thanks so much, Kevin. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very very much. And until next time, be amazing. Thanks for tuning in to another empowering episode of Business Amplified with Kevin A. Dunlap. If you found value in today's insights, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Keep amplifying your business. And remember, your success journey is our inspiration. Until next time on Business Amplified, go out there and make your business thrive.